good evening again. I'll come up with something better than good evening, but anyway. Um, Especially since it's not really evening yet. Well, it's late afternoon. <laughs> it's three o'clock, to be honest. We've, the tea's ready to go, um, but not yet. <laughs> we'll We've get got this to do, done quick. The important work's coming later. We just do this bit. So we're just going to read again um, about the good ground. Because we think there's a few extra bits we wanted to waffle on about, about the good ground. And also, I think it's going to lead into something the Lord's been showing me, which we hopefully will share in the coming videos to keep you, you know, hearing and seeing and nourished and all that. Anyway, Andy's just going to read the last bit okay, of Okay, so the, Matthew the 13 again, um, verse 23. But he that received the seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Now, some of the things that I wanted to talk about, sorry, I'm tripping over each other a bit here because we're in the kitchen, it's very narrow. <laughs> it's, it's one person it's only, not. which is uh, this is my room. That's why it's a bit of a mess, to be fair. But anyway, yeah. So we're in the kitchen tonight, we're cooking up a a good word yeah yeah I'm full of it tonight right so <laughs> so a parable I've wrote down here well I haven't wrote it I've wrote this from um, Matthew Henry um, talking about um, parables and things and a parable is a shell that keeps good fruit for the diligent but keeps it from the slothful so it's protecting the story is like a, a protection around the the great pearl inside the the, the God's word. Mm, that, you're saying it's accessible to those who want to find yeah, it. Yeah, that's who right. Who want to who want to search it out, but um, but for those that are, are lazy and can't be bothered, it's it's just a twee little story. Yeah, yeah, and everybody knows these stories, um, like the house that he built on the sand and on the rock. They all sound actually, they're scientifically correct because if you built a house on sand you would be slightly foolish unless it was a sandcastle and it was just there for the day. But if you wanted to plant something for the, the long term, you'd be planting it on a rock. But, these, the, but that's got nothing to do with what the parable say. And the parable is about the rock of Christ building all of your life on him. Anyway, one of the things I was it wanted to bring or talk to you about today is that many of us, when we first take our journey with the Lord, can sometimes not see the seed and in some areas of your life particularly if you look at it from a fleshly point of view which were very carnal at the start can almost make you feel like giving up but the point of parables and the mysteries that surround parables and the way Jesus talks the mysteries of the gospel the mysteries of redemption the mysteries of sanctification the mysteries that Christ is risen that Christ is alive these mysteries, rather than to push you away, they'll push away the fleshly, but they will bring in, they will quicken the heart of a believer. Because what he'll want to know is he'll want to understand these mysteries. He'll want to kind of have it revealed to him from Christ that he is their, he is their son or daughter, that, that Christ loves him and God's in his life and working in him. And just to give you an idea... Some, some, well, not some, I think every writer I've read, Christian writer, is nearly always said that for many years they had issues and struggles and they didn't really believe the full gospel. Like there was issues that they were struggling with that they didn't see in their life particularly. They believed in God, they loved the Lord, they were marching towards him, but when they preached certain things, they didn't always see it in their life. For instance, they might preach redemption or they might preach... Um, having all their sins forgiven, all their past, but there may be an area in their life or some faith thing that they didn't really see. So in, in the case of Wesley, faith, he, yeah. he said that he, he he was preaching faith but wasn't seeing it yeah. in his life, didn't he? Yeah, we Wesley said exactly what Andy's just said, that he, he went to his friend Peter and said, you know, I should stop stop preaching. Do you think I should? And he says, no, you keep preaching faith till you have it. And that's part of the mystery of the kingdom of God. That we're on this journey, we're pressing in until we've fully got it. And it's very important this, because if we don't have it, we must press in. Not, not fall away, not pull back, not stop going to meetings, not stop reading the word or praying, but press in. 
get that seed into the good ground. Well, you have to stop going to meetings at the minute. Yeah, we do at the moment. Yeah, but but <laughs> he's but, not saying that you no. you should do things that they've been told not to no, do by the government. No, we're pressing in now into God in this time. What a glorious time! What a time! to be forced to sit. Now, again, some of us are still going to work. Some of us are, but some of us have, have got many hours on our hand. And not only that, we've got, is a sense of when you're held back and stopped, there's a bit of frustration. Uh, there's a sadness as well. Um, I don't want to talk about it too much because it upsets me, but not seeing the, the people of our church, not the, the close people that, that I love and care for, is quite upsetting it's quite when I see pictures of stuff and when I think about the things that we've done and it's quite hard to you know it, it fills you with sadness but we're to press on with the Lord this is a great time to come to the Lord and um and Andrew Murray he said when he wrote some of his books later on he said looking back he wrote about things he'd not experienced so again he was probably talking about having being forgive be, being forgiving um being compassionate to all, even people that come against you, even even your own people in church, loving them. A lot of us would testify that we, we're probably not at that point where we can really love people that come against us. and and But that's what we're called to do. So we need to press in into that good ground. And another thing that I thought about, the when we used to grow, when I say used to, we've not for a while just through lack of, you know wanting to do it probably some of it and busyness as well particularly with jobs and stuff where we've increased hours whereas when we had babies years ago i was at home a lot and andy would come home and help me do it but we used to grow quite a lot of stuff in the greenhouse tomatoes and peppers and and maras and whatever things like that and um but when you grow plants even when they're only titchy like sort of three or four inch high you can touch the leaves and smell them and you can tell what they are you know, like you can smell the tomato vine before there's any fruit on it. And we have to be conscious that what, what seed that we've planted in our hearts, if it's the true seed, if it's the word of God, we will start to look like the vine of Christ in, Math, in uh, John 15. It, we'll show characteristics of Jesus. So we'll be loving, forgiving, compassionate, righteous, honesty, truth gentleness meekness all of these things that that jesus it was and is all of the things that we're told to be in the fruitfulness of god in his creation the new creation that we are all of them things must be coming through the the the, the fruit at the end the the real christian the what are you laughing at the real christian the real thing that might not seem visible until a long way into our walk but it's got to there's got to be shoots coming even if people can't sit for instance you must feel it in your heart that you're moving forward with God if you're just going to ignore the word and just carry on if we if we look like Adam if we look like we're more interested in intelligence passing things worldly stuff money power um looking good if we're more interested in that than rather be interested in our hearts being changed into a new man in Christ if that's our goal then we've never planted the seed we've never repented we've never come forth to the Lord and said Lord take me use me I'm an empty vessel and these are the things that we need to pray um, that go into the good ground anyway uh, I think we'll leave it there yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's we're a bit late on the three o'clockers we're in our house we have well it's a bit of a lie. We have we it's, try to it's get three o'clockers. Usually late because it's I'm not usually, usually home by from three work. Yeah, but the three o'clockers is an essential thing if you're English. You have a cup of tea, um, and and if you've well, and sometimes a bit of cake if you're lucky. Yeah, I was going to say if you're good, but no one's good. <laughs> Jesus said no one's good, so no one deserves the fruit cake. But but we sometimes get what we don't deserve because the Lord is so gracious to okay. us. Anyway, praise the Lord. Have a good evening, day, morning shine today for the lord put your heart in his hands trust don't, him don't you think we're, we're nicely colored yeah look at the color, color look at the, she went to change to look a bit smarter and i did and then i pulled this out and noticed that look color you see one in cry with one flesh <laughs> even though we sometimes like some of that you know but not really obviously 
Um, a joke. But yeah, we love each other and we're one in flesh. And we're all one in Christ. If we've had the seed sowed in our hearts and we're, we're bringing forth the fruit of Jesus Christ. Because that's what we all want. We all say that we want to be close to the Lord. That we wish we heard his voice. Well, brothers and sisters, you can hear his voice. You can know him. If you sow the seed of Jesus into your heart, if you give your life, if you repent, honest repentance, even if you think you can't do it, get on your knees and say sorry. Show the Lord, ask the Lord to show you your heart and how you're wicked and you and you've deceived people and you've <coughs> sorry and you've done wrong. And the Lord will come into your life and he'll lift it from you and give you his burden, which is light and, and easy. And our burden is heavy. And, and blinding and deafing and all that. Anyway, I'm going on. We love you. We love on. you and we'll <laughs> see you soon. In Jesus' name. Soon. Amen. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.